ディズニー・ウィニー・ダポー・ティガー・イン・トラボルディズニー・ウィニー・ダポー・ティガー・イン・トラボルクリスパー・ロビンウィニー・ダポー・ウィニー・ダポー・ウィニー・They lived in a wonderful world of their own in the middle of the forest, where grown ups never came. It was called the Hundred Acre Wood, and lots of other friends lived there too. There was Piglet, Kanga, and Baby Wu, Tigger, Gloomy Old Iron, Rabbit, and Owl, and they all had happy times together, as well as Some very unusual adventures. Of everyone who lived in the Hundred Acre Wood, the bounciest was Tigger. As Tigger himself often said, bouncing is what Tiggers do best. Tigger's bounciness was not always appreciated by his friends. Rabbit, in particular, got quite cross when Tigger bounced at him. Especially if he was tending his vegetable patch at that time, Tigger always made such a mess. Rabbit tried time and again to stop Tigger bouncing, but his plans never worked. Then, one day, Tigger discovered for himself that bouncing could be overdone. It happened one winter morning when the forest was covered in snow. On this snowy day, Wu was sitting on his mailbox, waiting eagerly for Tigger to arrive. When is he going to get, her, get here, Mama? Wu asked Kangar. I can't wait to play in the snow. Be patient, dear, said Kangar with a smile. He'll be here. Before she could finish her sentence, Tigger came. Bouncing and pounce, bouncing through the snow. We!、Oui, he laughed as he skidded to a stop. Well, here、I'm, I am. Did I surprise you, Roo? You certainly did, said the Lou. Happily, I like surprises. He jumped from the mailbox and landed in a pile of snow. Are you ready for some bouncing? asked the tiger. Yes, yes. Squealed Wu. We are very good at bouncing, aren't we, Tiger? Of course we are, said the Tiger. Bouncing is what Tigers do best of all. Now, just a moment, dear, said Kanga, as she took off her scarf and wound it round Wu's neck. Keep this scarf on and Is your sweater warm enough? Yes, ma'am, said Ru impatiently. Can I go now, please? All right, said Kanga. Tigger, make sure you have Ru home in time for his nap. And do be careful. Don't worry, Mrs. Kanga, said the Tigger. I'll take care of the little nipper. And Tigger and Ru bounced off into the forest. Roo enjoyed the view as he bounced along on Tigger's shoulders. He had never seen snow before, and he thought the hundred acre wood looked enchanting in its blanket of sparkling white. There was a lake in the forest, and Tigger decided to bounce towards that. As he and Roo came closer, they saw that the lake was frozen solid and that. Rabbit was skating along its glassy surface. Hello, long ears, Tigger called. Rabbit pretended not to hear. He didn't want Tigger bouncing in and spoiling his plan, his fun. And Rabbit especially didn't like being called long ears, so he just went on gliding along the ice. Smiling and humming to himself. t 
Tigger and Roo stood beside the lake and watched the rabbit. That looks like fun, said Roo. Can Tigger's eyes skate as well as a rabbit? Can Tigger's eyes skate? said the Tigger. Why, that's what Tigger's do best. Just watch. And he bounced onto the ice. But Tigger lost his balance. He went slipping and sliding and stumbling wildly across the ice, till he crashed into Rabbit and sent them both tumbling into a snowbank. Why me? groaned Rabbit, rubbing his head. Why does it always have to be me? Tigger's don't like ice skating, Tigger announced, brushing the snow off his fur. Let's look for something else to do, Roo. I know, said Roo. I'll bet you can climb trees, Tigger. Of course I can, said Tigger. In fact, Tigger's down just climb trees. We bounce up them. I'll show you. With Roo clinging to his neck, Tigger gave a huge bounce and went shooting straight up into a tree. That was a good bounce, wasn't it, Roo? He said. Oh, yes, cried Roo gleefully. Tigger bounced farther and farther up the tree. See, he said, she said to Roo. I told you Tigger's could climb trees. Suddenly, Tigger looked down. The ground seemed a long, long way below. Hey, Tigger gasped. How did this tree get so high? By now, who was feeling quite at home in the tree, and he began clambering up and down the branches on his own. Oh, Tigger, he squealed, I can't wait to tell Mama how much fun we've been having. Or, or maybe you'd better not say anything to your mom, said the Tigger, hanging on the tree for dear life. Why not, the Tigger? asked the wolf. Because, said Tigger, even though Tigers are very good at getting up trees, I'm not absolutely positively sure I can remember how to get down. That's all right, said Roo. I like it up here. I hope we can stay for a long, long time. Suddenly, Roo grabbed hold of Tigger's tail and began to swing back and forth. Oh, this is even more fun than climbing, he cried. He enjoyed it so much that he made up a little sun. Don't swing on the string. It's much too frail. The best, of, the best kind of swing is a tiger's tail. But all the swinging uh, uh, was making Tigger very dizzy. Stop, Roo, please, he begged. You are rocking the forest. I'm sorry said Roo, settling down on the nearby branch. What's the matter, Tigger? I was just getting a little seasick, said Tigger, from seeing too much. Meanwhile, down on the ground, Piglet was watching Pooh, who was staring at some paw prints in the snow. What are you doing, Pooh? inquired Piglet. Tracking something replied Pooh. What are you tracking? asked the Piglet. I don't know yet, said Pooh. I'll have to wait until I catch up with it. Pooh, said Piglet, I do my agree for a bear of very little brain. You certainly are very clever. Suddenly Pooh came a hole. Ah, he said, a very mysterious thing. Piglet, look, there's a hole New set of tracks. What Pooh hadn't realized was that he and Piglet were walking around in a circle and the paw prints they were following were their own. And so they went on, feeling a little anxious now in case the animals in front of them were of hostile intent. Suddenly, Pooh and Piglet heard a sound. A morning, bellowing, howling sort of sound. They stopped and listened. Hello, they heard. 
There's something in that tree over there, said the Pooh. Piglet clung tightly to Pooh. Isn't it one of the fierce animals? He asked in a trembling little voice. Yes, said the Pooh. It's a jaguar. What? What's a jaguar, Pooh? asked the Piglet as they crept towards the trees. Halloo! came the howling sound again. Jaguars hide in treetops, shouting, Halloo! said the Pooh. And when you look up at them, they drop down on you. I'm looking down, Pooh, said the piglet quickly. His voice was trembling and his knees were shaking with fear. Halloo! cried the jaguar. Again, without thinking, piglet looked straight up at the top of the tree. And what he saw filled him with happy relief. Pooh! Look! he cried. It's not a jaguar at all. It's Tigger and Roos up there with him. Up in the tree, Roo had spotted their friends below. Pooh and Piglet are here, he told Tigger. Thanks, goodness, said the Tigger. He was still quite dizzy and he was beginning to feel very frightened. Hello down there. Hello, Tigger and Roo, called the Pooh. What are you doing up there? We were just doing some bouncing, said Roo, and Tigger decided to bounce up into this tree. Now he's stuck. Somebody, please help me, called the Tigger. He was getting more frightened by the minute. Don't worry, Tigger, said Pooh. I'll go and fetch Christopher Robin. He'll know what to do. He always does. And I'll stay here and keep you company till... They get back, said Piglet. Gosh, Tigger, I'm glad it's you up there and not the jaguar. I don't think I would like jaguars one little bit. Tigger just groaned. Pooh ran off as fast as he could, and the world soon got round to everyone in the hundred acre wood that Tigger was in trouble. Christopher Robin came running at once bringing rabbit and kanga with him. Oh, gracious, said the kanga. When they got to the tree, Roo, please be careful. I'm all right, mama, said Roo cheerfully. But Tigger's stuck. Oh, that's too bad, said the kanga. No, that's good, said the rabbit. He can't bounce anybody up there, but we have to get him down said Christopher Robin. He took off his coat and told the rabbit, Kanga and the Pooh, each to grab a corner. Well, hold it out like a net, Christopher Robin explained. And Roo and Tigger can jump into it. You go first, Roo. Roo jumped. Whee! He cried, bouncing into the coat and out again. And finally, landing in Kanga's arms. That was fun. Come on, Tigger. It doesn't hurt. Jump! Jump? cried the tiger. Tigers don't jump. They bounce. Then bounce down, suggested Pooh. Don't be ridiculous, said Tigger. Tigers only bounce up. Hooray! cheered Rabbit. Tigger will have to stay up there forever. Forever? groaned the tiger. Oh, if I can just get down from here, I promise I'll never bounce again. Never, said the rabbit. Did anyone hear that? Tigger has promised never to bounce again. At last, after much coaxing, a very cautious and timid Tigger let go of the tree. There, said Christopher Robin, as Tigger landed safely. You are all right now? I am, said Tigger. I am all. Thank goodness, I am so happy. I feel like bouncing for joy. Oh, no, warned the rabbit. You can't. You made a promise. I did, didn't I? Said the tiger softly. Does that mean I can't ever bounce again? Never, declared the rabbit. Not even one teasy wheezy bounce? Asked the tiger. Not even a smidgen of the bounce? Insisted rabbit. Tiger's whole body seemed to set. 
and he turned suddenly away from his friends. You know, said Wu, I think I like the old bouncy tiger best. So do I, said the boo. Everyone looked at the rabbit. Oh, all right, said the rabbit at last. I like the old tiger better too. Tiger bounced straight at the rabbit. You mean I can bounce again after all? Rabbit nodded. Hooray, shouted the tiger, grabbing the rabbit. Come on, long ears, you bounce with me. Me bounce? squatted rabbit. Why, certainly, said the tiger. After all, you have the feet for it. The next thing rabbit knew, he and tiger were both bouncing with all their might, and, much to his amazement, rabbit found that bouncing really was wonderful fun. It felt like flying. Soon, everyone was bouncing in the snow, having a perfectly lovely time. Christopher Robin and his friends never forgot that exciting winter day in the Hundred Acre Wood. And although Tiger never stopped bouncing from that, from that day on, he was very careful not to bounce near trees. Grown-ups think that all these stories are make-believe and that Christopher Robin's friends are just stuffed toys. But you and I know better, don't we? Of course we do, as sure as there's a hundred-acre wood.